Uh, good afternoon. Thank you uh, for being here. Sorry to be running a bit late uh, to begin. I want to just uh, talk about uh, the week that was. We're really satisfied with uh, the acquisitions that the organization made uh, this week, just to summarize most of which uh, you know. Uh, on Tuesday, Anthony Mantha was acquired from the Washington Capitals for uh, a second round pick and a fourth round pick. Uh, size, uh, uh, talent, uh, we felt, uh, I've mentioned I think uh, earlier this year, we felt that we would at some point want to add a veteran winger and he was a player that uh, was identified by our pro staff and uh, um, a real a uh, target for us, that's why we were aggressive in terms of trying to complete that trade uh, early. And uh, he's a motivated player that's had uh, a real good season in Washington, we think complements uh, our forward group uh, very well. Uh, would, bought, would be on Wednesday. Uh, we acquired Noah Hannafin from the Calgary Flames for a first round pick, which is now confirmed to be in 2026. Uh, conditional third round pick uh, with that and uh, defenseman Daniel uh, Mirmanov. And in uh, Noah Hannafin, we get uh, a really uh, high-end, uh, smooth, skilled, uh, great skater uh, defenseman. Uh, you know, he's at the right age, he's 27 years old. He's played in the league a long time, uh, which is why he's a free agent, uh, a potential free agent at the age of 27. And we really uh, feel that uh, he is a player that's going to have an immediate impact uh, on our team, uh, very well regarded across uh, the National Hockey League. He's a real good uh, NHL defenseman that we are uh, thrilled to have uh, in our organization. And then most recently uh, this morning, acquiring Tomas Hurdle from the San Jose Sharks for uh, a first round pick in 2025. Uh, David Edstrom, who was our first round uh, selection in 2023. And in return, we get Thomas Hurdle with a 17% salary reduction, which puts him on uh, our salary cap at 6.75 million. And as well, we receive third round draft choices from San Jose uh, in 2025-2027. Uh, Hurdle is uh, currently uh, sidelined with a knee injury. Uh, we do anticipate that he will be available uh, in the regular season. We'll know a little bit more with respect to that timeline once he is uh, examined by uh, our trainers, but we are uh, hopeful that he will uh, play before the regular season is, uh, is concluded. And um, uh, he uh, had a minor procedure on his uh, knee, I believe on, I want to say February 12th, but you'd need to check that. But uh, um, we're comfortable that he'll be, uh, he'll be in our lineup in the regular season. The, the process of, uh, of how we got here, we have uh, had a really good uh, draft grid uh, going into the, uh, you know, the, the last three months when you really start to tighten up what you might be doing with player acquisitions. Uh, in our draft grid for the next three seasons, we were missing uh, a fourth round pick in 2024, which we traded to acquire uh, Aiden Hill. We were missing a seventh round pick in uh, I believe 2025, which we used to acquire Jonathan Quick. We had every other draft choice from those three, uh, three draft years, which is really uncommon for a contending team. I think if you uh, look around the NHL, uh, the teams that are contending, that's capital that uh, needs to be used to, uh, to, uh, to strengthen your team uh, for a playoff run. So we were fortunate uh, that we had a really good draft grid. And the other thing, that was really helpful as we had our first round draft choice from 2023, which I believe were the only the third Stanley Cup uh, champion in the last 10 years uh, to have a first round pick. Uh, I'd like to credit our amateur staff under Bobby Lowe's to, for selecting a real good player and David Edstrom, who clearly was uh, one of the key pieces in the deal with San Jose. They have done a great job with uh, mid-round picks, uh, finding hockey players that are developed uh, under Will Nickel, our Director of Player Development, and allowed us to move uh, draft picks or players we have drafted to uh, strengthen our team. Last year, uh, the example was Ivan Barbashev, who uh, we'll have in our team now a minimum of uh, six years for a good young player, and Zach Dean, again, another draft choice of Bobby and his staff. 
that uh, enabled us uh, to add a player uh, like that. And then from there, the work of our pro staff and our hockey operations, we uh, feel that that is a real competitive advantage for our organization, the talented people that we have in those areas and the work we do. And a lot of these things uh, come down to doing more work than other people. And I really uh, uh, appreciate uh, the efforts of all of the people uh, that I'm touching on. We identify players of interest. That's a process that begins uh, before Christmas. Uh, we tighten that, uh, tighten that up as we go along. Um, contrary to popular belief, we don't go after every good player. We go after good players we like, good players we identify, opportunities we identify. And this week, we were able to uh, acquire each of the three players that we, uh, that we uh, wanted to bring into our organization. It doesn't always work that way. You can do the exact same amount of work. You can, uh, you know, have the, a similar process, and sometimes trades don't uh, don't unfold for one reason or another. Uh, this year, we feel really good that uh, that it did. Um, we wanted to help our team. Our recent play uh, hasn't been good enough. We know that. We'll fix that. When you're a general manager, you're a thirty-five thousand foot view on your organization, not just the hockey team, but your entire organization. Uh, we can't let the fact that we lost a game last night change anything about what, uh, what we're doing. It's a lot broader perspective uh, than that. I think the one thing that we do feel strongly about, uh, our players have earned the respect for management to try to help. And I think when you have a room full of champions that it's, uh, uh, easy for us to want to, uh, you know, improve the talent and, and continue to add and try to help and try to uh, uh, put our team in a position to uh, to achieve that again. So that was uh, uh, the the thought process of the things that uh, went into uh, bringing us to where we are uh, here today. So I think I've touched on most. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to do health updates. Uh, health updates. Uh, Mark Stone. Uh, you know, when he was injured, I, I made my mind up that when we had media availability after the trade deadline, we would share with, uh, with the media and our fans uh, what we can. Mark had a very serious injury, uh, a lacerated spleen. He will uh, miss at least the regular season. I don't know how much more uh, than, he'll, than that he will miss. It's really an unknown for us. And these are uh, different type of injuries than uh, what hockey players or athletes normally sustain. This is all about, you know, CT scans that determine the health of the spleen. Uh, it's impossible to know what the timeline is. I'm sure every single person in this room has Googled lacerated spleen, and you can tell that it's a it's a little bit of a tough one to pinpoint in terms of circling a date on the calendar. So uh, we wish Mark uh, a healthy recovery. There's no reason to expect that he won't have a healthy recovery. I don't think this puts him in, at risk in any way longer term, but it is going to take the time that it is going to take. So that's uh, the update on Mark Stone. Uh, Will Carrier had an upper body injury. We expected that he probably would be back, uh, certainly skating, maybe playing by now. His return has been complicated by, uh, by illness, by pretty serious illness, so that slowed him down a little bit. Uh, Pavel Dorofeyev will return uh, tomorrow. I believe he's been taken off IR. If he hasn't yet, he will be soon. Uh, Brett Howden would have skated today. Had our team skated, he would have skated in a non-contact uh, jersey, so he's uh, getting close. Uh, Alec Martinez had a procedure, uh, a lower body procedure, uh, after we arrived home from our uh, five-game trip, and he'll be out of the lineup short term. I think that covers the people that uh, aren't in the lineup. I've tried to explain the thought process uh, behind the moves and uh, and recognize the people that uh, that help us make these uh, that help us make these trades. So with that, I would open it up to questions. Start with Danny. Just wait for the mic. Oh, the mic's on both sides. Guys. Danny Webster, Las Vegas Sun. Uh, Kelly, you kind of touched on it earlier, but just the importance of bringing in these three guys without taking anybody off the active roster, I guess, how important was that for you evaluating over the last couple of weeks with the, with the team in the slide that it's in? Well, I think that uh, it, it's, a, it's a challenging time of year for NHL players. And uh, our players know 
that we want to win. They know we'll do anything to win, which I think uh, they appreciate and expect. They, they like being part of a winning organization. But a trade deadline always gives a certain amount of angst uh, to players. And oftentimes, uh, you know, you never know for sure because you don't uh, do exit surveys. But uh, oftentimes it affects people you might not think it would expect, that, that it would affect. So uh, I'm really hopeful uh, with the trade deadline uh, in the rear view mirror that that helps us sort of, uh, you know, I, I look at uh, tomorrow as sort of, uh, you know, turning the page uh, a little bit, if you will. And I know uh, last year, I believe it was January 12th that uh, Mark Stone got hurt, January 11th that uh, Jack Eichel got hurt this year. So we won't be playing those days next year. Um, when Mark got hurt last year, it really affected our team, and and it really it affected our team right into the trade right into pardon me the All Star break, and then we turned the page and we came out of the All Star break and we uh, played real good hockey till June thirteenth. So I look at the the trade deadline uh, having a similar impact on us. It's time to turn the page and get going. It's time to turn the page, and uh, I think that part of uh, you know, I, I just think it puts players in a better frame of mind. The people here now are in our organization. We've made our acquisitions. No one came out of our room. We never, at any point through uh, this entire process, and, and you know, to, to state the obvious, but sometimes it gets overlooked, uh, trade deadline is a lot more than this week. The trade deadline, uh, you know, keeps me awake for months, right? So I think that uh, uh, having that, uh, behind us is going to be a healthy thing uh, for us as we as we move on. Jesse McCann, Jesse Grange with the Athletic. You you mentioned a lot of work goes in and not all trades are completed. Um, from the outside, at least, it seems like you and your staff are able to complete a higher percentage of them. And I, you mentioned maybe the reputation of going after guys. I think that's partially because you get so many. Why do you think you've had more success completing big trades like that maybe than some other general managers have? It's hard to say. Uh, you know, you uh, have conversations with people, and uh, you know, it, it depends on on your approach. We uh, we pay. Uh, you know, I think that's part of it. I think uh, uh, we we've made some good deals for other some good deals for other teams as well. I think when you look at San Jose, where they are, this is a really good trade for them today. I think when Calgary's got an expiring. A uh, player that was not going to resign in Calgary. I think that this uh, this was a trade that made sense uh, for them as well. Um, we work at it, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I don't ever, uh, you know, there's, you know, there's all kinds of dynamics into negotiating and things that go into that. But but at the core of it is preparation and hard work. That uh, that doesn't change, right? That's uh, really important. So we try to do our work as well as we can. I, I say it every time we have conversations like this. Uh, I'm surrounded by a lot of really talented people that work extremely hard, and uh, we are able to uh, to get a lot of things done. That's uh, that's what happened. But as I said at the outset, we can't make these trades this week if we don't have a, a healthy draft grid. That's uh, that's what you know, kind of this turned into. And I think that that when you uh, the the thing that you the, the the people in this room probably will never appreciate. Uh, my, my background in junior hockey, I was all about scouting, drafting, developing. That's uh, when I came to Vegas for expansion, I was fascinated by building a team and drafting and, and uh, how that would play out. I've said to you guys many times before, <clears throat> you, you manage the team in front of you and these have been wise decisions that we've made with our draft choices to convert them into players that have helped us win. So we don't, uh, um, we have tremendous regard for our draft, uh, draft capital. Uh, we, you know, make these decisions very carefully and, and uh, you know, judiciously. But we think when, uh, for example, you have a, a Thomas Hurdle that's, uh, you know, under contract for uh, six more years, you're going to have to nail uh, your draft choices to, to ever come close to putting that into your lineup. And then you have to also factor in where your team is. And, and the, the real good example I used last year, Zach Dean, we project to be a player very similar to Ivan Barbashev. 
Ivan Barbashev was 27 years old and we're trying to win the Stanley Cup. So, you know, I think that's, uh, that's part of it, I guess, is assessing uh, the value of the, of the assets that you have. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of teams do, do this, Jesse. We've been, uh, we've been fortunate that we've been able to uh, make some trades that have, have uh, been, been very helpful. Ken Volke, Sinman, Dot Vegas. When you made the trade for Hannafin, there was a condition in there that if that first round pick is used up, it'll go to 2026. When you made that condition, was Hurdle the one that you were thinking at that moment? We, we had already had our 25 first round pick in discussions with San Jose. Didn't feel that it was fair to pull that out of discussions that we'd have with San Jose, so I had to explain that to Calgary. Obviously didn't share the the discussions he was that that pick was part of, but just that that could happen. Uh, phone, phoned Craig Conray this morning, uh, you know, 20 to 12, uh, to let him know that that's uh, that's what would uh, that's what the pick would be. Steve and Adam. Hi, Kelly. Steve Carp with the Where's Sporting phone, Tribune. <laughs> Not in my pocket, and it's off. You're just going by memory today, are you? No, no, no. <laughs> Okay. Oh, it's on. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two things. One, the salary retention angle to all three trades. Yeah. How were you able to get that without having to give up a current player on the roster? I know Miro went to Calgary in the Hannafin thing, and as Hannafin is also what on an expiring, I believe. Correct. Yeah. It was talked that. You guys were trying to get an extension done before the deal with the Flames. Is there any progress there, or is that something you'll revisit with him after the year? We did not talk to Noah's representatives prior to uh, the trade. We have talked to them since, but we had not talked to them uh, prior. Your first question is a real good one, and uh, within each deal, we did, uh, we did pay for retention. And when you look at the San Jose deal, with the retention of uh, you know 8.14 to 6.75, there's a pretty significant yeah. financial uh, component to that. But maybe even more so, it's for six years. So part of the return that San Jose received was completely linked to the retention piece. There, uh, Noah Hannafin is an expiring contract. I think if you look at the trades around the NHL, a lot of the uh, players being traded on expiring contracts, teams are more receptive to retaining 50% to, to effectively grease the wheels uh, for trades to happen. The broker uh, idea, which you see more and more, which is one I think we were maybe the first uh, team in the NHL to do it years ago now, much more common, uh, is again to cut that cap hit in half again. So that's what we did with, uh, uh, with Noah. And what we were really working to do um, is to complete these trades so that everybody could fit into our lineup and play. So that's, uh, that's why you know, we pay a fifth round pick to Philadelphia uh, to be able to bring Noah in, what is he at, 1.25 or just, uh, just under. That, that's why you do it uh, that way. And uh, you know, again, that's part of the compensation that goes to uh, Calgary. Uh, and also to uh, to Washington uh, with Anthony Manta, but but certainly the hurdle deal uh, standalone because of the term would have been a much bigger part of the of the package that went the other way uh, in his case. Adam Hill, Las Vegas Review Journal. I was going to ask about a Hannafin extension too, so I'll just I'll pivot and say, um, when did you come about to know that hurdle could be available? So many guys were talked about. But guys that are you know under contract for a long time aren't necessarily usually on the market. So how did that come about? And then also the recent play of the team. How much did that weigh into your decision making the last week? Uh, both good questions. The recent play doesn't doesn't come into play. You have to, you know, we're all happier when we win the next day than when we lose. But you have to have the perspective that this is, you know, a way bigger. You know, way bigger decision than than the day to day, right? That's it's uh, it's far more uh, outreaching than that. Um, you know, I think with uh, uh, sorry, Adam, your question again, the, the second part. So I guess how did you come, how did it come to be that hurdle was thinking it was available? Yeah, sorry. We talked. To, you know, we we had uh, 
uh, you know, Thomas Hurdle, I don't know if it was part of the, re the release or not. Thomas Hurdle had a full no move uh, contract, I guess it's probably publicly available. Um, we approached San Jose uh, uh, before he got hurt. Uh, so it, uh, it was that long ago that I uh, talked to San Jose, he got hurt. And that, you know, certainly, you know, changes the dynamic. Uh, first of all, we didn't know how badly. Uh, so, you know, once we had a little more uh, feel for that, we, uh, we re-engaged and, uh, you know, uh, Mike and I talked about this a lot. We had to involve uh, his representatives because of the no move and, and uh, you know, the team, you know, had to go to the player. Like it was, it was uh, you know, a deal like that gets pretty complex, uh, especially to, to Steve's question with the retention, with the term. Uh, and all of those things, uh, that one is uh, one that we had to work out, uh, you know, for a long time. Vince Sapienza, Fox 5 Las Vegas, just to kind of piggyback off that, you've obviously had a lot of viewings uh, of Thomas Hurdle over the years. So I I'm curious, is, is timing just a lot of that in, in terms of, hey, this is a guy that could fit with, with our core, especially with his term and, and contract and where this group's going? Well, my comments to Thomas Hurdle were, Thomas, if you play as good with us as you did against us, we'll all be happy. So he's been a player that we've had uh, tremendous regard for. You know, you know him because he's uh, in the division. You know him because he was a younger person as part of what was uh, a, a tremendous rivalry. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, he's, he's going to be he's going to be a real good fit for us, uh, I think. and, and uh, you know, again, we have a, a real good feel for him. Our pro scouts had lots of viewings on him, but um, you know, I ran I ran into Derek England at lunch, and uh, you know, you can't move the guy. Like he, you know, he just, uh, you know, that's you know, he just remembers him so well, right, from playing against him. And he's, uh, you know, one of the things I never mentioned, and it was true of Barbashev last year. We we said it this, you know, a year ago. Uh, Barbie was a little different than what we had. So was Thomas Hurdle. You know, so is Thomas Hurdle, and uh, you know the size, the power, the net front presence, uh, the puck protection. He's uh, he's elite in those areas. He really uh, he really is, and I think that it complements uh, what we have. No different than we felt Ivan Barbashev was different than what we had. That was an important uh, reason behind our interest in those players. Uh, 